This video is sponsored by MPB. So morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. In this video, what I wanna do is go through your images and critique them. And there's something that I've spotted in quite a few of them that I think can be a quick fix and an easy way to improve your photos. There's some amazing images that we're gonna look at. I'd also say that when you're critiquing photos, then it's quite personal. Um, so not everybody's gonna agree with everything I say. There's no rules, it's just my opinion on them. And um, hopefully it'll help you improve your photography. And if nothing else, I think it'd be quite interesting to have a look at these photos. So let's have a look. Okay, so we're gonna get into this first one here from um, Sishi. I think I probably pronounced that right. So what I wanna do is talk about something that I've seen in all these photos. I'm gonna talk about all the bits of composition as well, but there's one thing that's really important, and this is a good example of it. So this is a lovely image from um, the Lake District, I believe, and um, we've got these trees having some fantastic light on them, and then we've got this um, amazing um, stream coming down. There's, there's something in photography that's all about simplicity and creating space for things to sort of breathe. And I think space and understanding how space in an image works and the distance um, and how areas in an image sort of interact is really, really important for photography. So I think this, this image could be improved. I really like it, but I think it could be improved just by a crop. You could have done this when you took the photo or maybe afterwards. And I think that this bottom right of it is quite distracting. And usually what I'd say is less is more in photography. So if we just crop here like this. So what I'm trying to do, and I'll show you in a second, is I'm trying to make this part of the image the same distance as this and have these in the center. So I think that an, an important, I can show you this with just drawing on with a brush, this area here and this area here being the same just really focuses it on the trees and this um, river going down into the trees. So I think that that really works and I want to explain that on a few of the photos as I go through as well. I think creating something that's simplistic like this makes it just more powerful. So this next one's just fantastic from, the, all these names are difficult, from this, these, um, it sounds like a, a Dutch name, this amazing, really fantastic, sort of artistic impression really of these trees. The, I really love the editing on this image. I think it's really nice. I think everything looks really well balanced. Um, and what I really like about this is that there is a really nice separation between these trees, these trees, and there's a gap here to the side. Um, and then another nice separation here and another gap to the side here. And I, I feel like that just really works. I think it's a really, really nice um, image composition. And I think, you know, I, I, I really like it. The only one thing I could probably say is that you could probably crop it in from this side here and maybe just create three equal lines. So if I cropped it to there, I think that equally works. So then basically what I'm doing is I've got a space there, a space there, and a space there that are all very similar. And I think that really adds to the image and makes it a little bit more powerful as well. So that's something to think about on that. But from a, from a um, editing point of view, I think this is really good. The only thing I'd maybe do to this, and I think I'm being really picky, is I'd probably put a radial gradient on there and maybe just increase the whites just to pull your eye a little bit to that center part of the image. But again, I'm being really picky. Okay, this next one is a good example of um, the good and bad in, in photos, really. This is from Richard, and I think he's done a really great job of finding a leading line here going through into this mysterious dark area. I usually like to have a light area at the end of a, a path, but I think this works really well. Um, but unfortunately, this bit here, I feel, it, although it's really nice, just draws your eye out of the image. So either you could darken this down, um, because what you want to do is try and focus the image on this path. And I understand that it is a nice part of the image, but I think sometimes, again, less is more. So you could crop in a little bit here, maybe. Um, I'm not sure about this path at the, at the bottom here either, so I'd maybe, maybe include a little bit of that. 
But then you could maybe just do a radial gradient here and just, just darken this down a little bit because I feel like you don't want your eye drawing to that light hand side. You want your eye going through to the tunnel here. I think that's really important to, di di you know, to direct the eye into the right place. Okay, this next image, I want to show this because it's from Adam. Um, and thanks everyone for sending the images in. I said it in a video, two or three videos ago, um, at the end of the video. So anybody who watched all the way through got a chance to do this, to upload your images so that I could use them in a critique video. But I really like this. I feel like um, it's just so powerful. You know, they're very, really powerful colors in landscape as well. And we often shy away from from using blue skies, but I think this has worked really well. And I sort of want to explain why I feel like this just looks so good and so simple. And it's about the space, and I know I keep talking about this, but it's so important. Because I think we've got equal space here, and here, and here, and almost here as well. Um, and these spaces are all equal. So this tree isn't crowded. It feels like it's got space. This lone cloud just adds a little bit of asymmetry to it, which just looks fantastic. And the colors are just so simple and work so well. So I just love this. I think it works fantastically well. This one is, is a, um, from Nikki. And um, Nikki said that she struggled a little bit with the colors on this. I, th I feel like the colors aren't too bad, to be honest. I feel like it's a little bit um, mysterious with these sort of toned down greens. O often greens can be really difficult to work with. But I think in this image, what maybe doesn't work is just the closeness to the edges that you've got some of the things and not giving them breathing room. So we've got here, just, um, just here, this is really close to the edge. Um, and then right at the bottom here, this is close to the edge. Here, there's a nice bit of breathing room for these trees here and here. And then this area is fantastic. So I think that um, that's something that definitely you could think about. I mean, you could crop this and crop that tree out. And I think that adds, you know, it doesn't distract your eye then. I think that adds a little bit more. But if you had anything more on the bottom, I think that would help this image. This is a similar image, actually, um, of, of this moon um, setting um, from Kathy, which is just so fantastic. I love the mist on the lake here and the stars and the clouds, really well captured. But I feel like on this image, you need more at the bottom because this, again, is just really tight at the bottom. Um, so just by adding just... Um, you know, maybe taking off some at the top and then adding it onto the bottom would really help this image because it just looks a little bit like you just need to either crouch down or turn the camera down. Um, the rest of this image is really nice. The, the only other thing I'd say, but I'm being picky, is if you move to the right a little bit, then this would move over here and be in more of a space, but I'm being super picky there, so I don't think that really matters. Okay, on to the next one. This is a fantastic image by um, Camilla. I really liked this image and I really like the, the tonality of this image. The fact you've got these greens and then this recession in the summer that you often get in mountains, probably in um, Europe, I suspect this. Um, there's loads of mini compositions just in this as well, which I really, really like. So if I, if I zoomed in, you, you could see that there's a composition here or here. Um, but I, I think this works because and the reason I like it is because this area here is very um, is very bland, really. You know, if we didn't have this hill in, I think this would be a very sort of um, empty area. It still may work because you've got these lines that draw your eye into the central mountains, and then you've got a sort of perceived diagonal that goes through here. So these two perceived diagonals worked really well. But I feel like this adds to it so much because it just balances the image it balances the image well so you've got this sort of weighted area and then you've got this which is lacking a little bit but this adds to it so it just sort of balances it off it's still a bit asymmetric but it works okay this image here is from chris and um, i think this is an image that i really feel like sometimes you don't need to include the sky. This is all about the trees and the mist. And um, it's so well seen. It's such a beautiful, beautiful morning that you've captured here. 
But if it was me, I would focus on these two central trees here and make it a little sort of a letterbox crop down to there. So I'd probably crop out that tree and make those trees the centre. So I might even crop out that tree as well and just have this. And you can see, if I just make that full screen, that's just like a really, really powerful image. It works really, really well. So, you know, that's, that's my suggestion for that. Often, zooming in, using a longer lens can make such a big difference in your photography. Okay, this one from John. I, I just want to show you this because it's fantastic. It's a, it's a silver birch tree, I think, or a couple of silver birch trees by the ocean, and it just looks fantastic. Um, I think a little bit of editing can help this, though, because you want to draw the attention to this tree and the glow from the sea here. So if it was me, I would get a, a brush, reduce the exposure, just brush down here, and just darken this area down a little bit. And then I would probably have a radial gradient from here and just make it a little bit more orange and a bit of dehaze, a little bit of saturation because I've added some dehaze. I want to bring that back, some contrast and just make it a little bit brighter because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw attention to the sun coming in from that, from that tree. So you can see I've just gone from this to this. I just want to draw the attention to the sun into this tree here and just make this a little bit darker. I could spend a little bit more time doing that, but just by dodging and burning, I think this will become a more powerful image. It stand out a little bit more. Okay, this one is from, um, oh, I don't know if there's a name there, but it's th this really nice waterfall here. Um, my only comment on this one, I really like the, the, the composition is there's a little bit of a, a white area here that draws your eye. And again, you want to try and get rid of those. So you could crop in a little bit like that. Um, and then I feel like the exposure you've got, which is one eighth of a second, if you just had a little bit of a longer exposure, maybe a half of a second, you have to be careful with these whites here, then you get more of a, a flow effect coming out of here, which would help to lead the eye through the water. Um, and I feel like, you know, this eighth of a second is maybe just a little bit quick and it's either not freezing the water and it's not creating that really nice lines of flow that take your eye through the image and look so good. Okay, this is a fantastic image from um, John. Uh, the one thing um, I did notice on this, uh, we've got this tire here. It's so good, but I didn't, I think if you could have gone a little bit closer to that tire and just moved just down a bit to make that tire a little bit more prominent. I mean, I'm being really critical. You've got some amazing lighting, amazing, amazing clouds um, in this. And, and you know, by using a, an exposure of eight seconds, you, you've managed to do really, really, really well here. Um, but again, you want to balance this. So if I just go back to my brush, make it a bit smaller. I feel like that gap needs to be the same as that gap there. And I think it's a little bit bigger. So what I do, is I would just crop that down a little bit to make it the same. And also I think your horizon is just a little bit off. So just sort that out. So I feel like that, you know, you by reducing that space there, you're bringing the tire more into the image. And I think that that connection between those two things works a little bit better. Okay, this image, um, oh, I've not got a name for this either. Sorry about that. I'll put the name on, on, on the edit. Um, this is a really nice island in Scotland, I think, um, a loch in Scotland, and I, I, I really like it. I feel like it just needs, it just looks a little bit off kilter, so I'm just gonna move it that way. But I feel like all this needs to, to, is to draw your eye into the island. It's just a, a gradient here um, that's you know just darkening this down, maybe just darken the shadows down, and then I'm just gonna warm that up to match the tones probably just reduce the saturation a bit. And I'd probably spend a bit more time on that, um, maybe do another gradient and darken it, but I think by darkening that, you're bringing your eye more into the island and that just works a lot better. Um, I wanted to show this image from Valerie just because I feel like it's a fantastic use of light and shade. Um, I really, really like it. So I really like 
the fact that you've used the shade in the background and the light on this tree to create this um, sort of inverse silhouette. Um, and then you've got really nice diagonals going into the mountains. There's a really simple um, relationship between the mountains and the these closer sort of hills in the foreground. And then you've got the moon smack bang in the center. I think it just works very simply. It's really well constructed image that's quite simple. And I think simple images always work really well. Okay, this one from Darren. Um, I think that the only thing I'd say on this is that these mountains in the background are really interesting, but they look a little bit lost in the composition. And I think there's a really easy way to solve that just by cropping out this bottom area. Um, so just by cropping it out, and you could be really harsh, well, let's, just, let's be harsh. So you could crop it out to here, I think. Um, again, I'm just gonna tweak that a little bit. But just by doing that, and maybe even crop in a tiny bit, I think these mountains become more prominent and it just creates a more sort of, a, an image that just sort of sits a little bit better, I think. Sometimes just a small crop can make such a big difference to an image. Okay, um, this is an image here from um, Astrid, and I wanted to, to, to show this one because I feel like this is a good example of where sometimes with Lightroom we get a little bit carried away with the shadows, and we and I think I think Astrid's created a really nice shot here of this waterfall and these autumn colours in Scotland. Um, I believe it's in Scotland. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's in. No, maybe it's in Patagonia actually. Yeah, I think it's Patagonia. Um, so. I didn't just guess that, by the way, she said in the comments. But um, I just reduce the shadows. It's difficult to do this because it's a JPEG. I've not got the original. But just by reducing the shadows, I feel like it it really helps the image. Um, you know, just to go from that to that. Because you want it to be believable. You want the, the you know, you're thinking about where the sun's coming from and you want the rocks that are not getting the sun to be in shadow and darker shadow and you want that contrast and sometimes people you know get rid of that by co that contrast by increasing shadows too much and i think this is a really good example um, so i thought it was worth showing okay this image here um, is one from ian and wow i wish i had taken this image <laughs> i've been trying to get an image like this of wild garlic and bluebells for so long i believe it's wild garlic maybe it's not um yeah i think it is and it's used a long lens here, an 84 millimeter lens. It's got this fantastic path going down, really nicely separated all these trees. There is really nothing I'd say, apart from one thing, which is, I just think if you put a radial gradient here and you just increase the whites and the exposure a little bit and maybe make it a bit smaller, then it's gonna be small this, it's not gonna be a massive, difference but I believe that this just go from that to that or just help your eye go into that area um, brilliant shot brilliant shot okay this one another fantastic woodland shot from Rich um, yeah this is this is a good example of um, an image that yeah this is another good example of an image that just maybe is a little bit cluttered and, and things are a little bit close to the edge. I feel like it's almost brilliant. This is an image that if it was in a comp competition that I'd probably select as a shortlisted image, but then I think when the judges looked at it, they will probably watch, watch you go and win a major competition now. But I, I feel like this, this is quite distracting, this um, fallen tree here. I think it's okay having that, but I think it needs more space. And again, these ferns, I just feel like they just need a little bit more space. You know, it's again trying to think about space in an image and how things relate to each other within an image. And I think because, particularly in this image, you've got quite a lot of space between these trees here, and then you've got these really tight spaces here and tight spaces to the edge, it sort of, it just doesn't, just doesn't quite work and again I'm being really critical because it's a beautiful image but I think that would really help it. Um, you could probably use an AI tool to expand the bottom and side and but that's cheating in it so maybe shouldn't do that. Um, 
This is an image from um, Charles that I really like. Um, I love um, these trees. I, I feel like this is either a silver birch or maybe a maple, silver birch, I think. Um, but I think there's two images here. There's the image on the right and the image on the left. So I would make this almost a square, I think, and just, or, well, maybe a four by five and just crop into that because I feel like that's such a stronger image. Again, less is usually more. Um, I feel like just feels a little bit more balanced. You know, whereas having all the other trees for me is almost too much. You, mean, you could maybe experiment and maybe just get rid of one at a time and see what it looks like. But um, I feel like that four by five crop is probably best. So this image, again, fantastic image of this brilliant um, sort of posts going out to sea. The only thing I'd say on this is I feel like the yellow isn't quite right in the sun. And I think this is a simple change because all you need to do, I think, is just, just reduce the saturation a little bit. Again, it's not gonna work. You could probably just change the hue to make it a little bit more orange as well. Maybe just reduce the saturation of the orange as well. Um, and then if it was me, I would maybe just reduce the exposure a little bit and then put another, you've probably done this already on the original, but put another radial gradient on there and just add a bit of dehaze, which will again, just reduce the saturation and just soften it up. So all I've done is I've gone from that to that, just to make it a little bit more believable. And I think that helps quite a lot really. So thanks ever so much for entering your photos into this and letting me critique your photos. I know it's really difficult to do that. I've done it myself recently, as you saw in this video here. So go and check that out. So I've, so I've done it. I've got an, uh, a Z8, it's on its way. Um, I haven't had one for ages. People think I've had one um, being a Nikon ambassador, but I've got to wait like everybody else. Um, but it is on its way. It's stuck in customs at the moment, unfortunately. Um, which means that I'll probably sell um, one of my Z7s, I think. And I'm gonna use um, MPB to do that. And if you're looking to sell or buy used equipment, then MPB is a fantastic platform to be able to do that. And it just means that you've got peace of mind when you're buying used equipment. So for instance, if I wanted to go and get um, a 24 to 70 Nikon Z lens, I could go and search for it and find this F4 lens, which is just a fantastic lens. Um, and then I could go and find any of those lenses. Uh, and it's here, there's one light new for 384 pounds, which is, a really good deal for that lens. Um, you can go and have a look at the lens. You can also have the peace of mind that it's approved and it comes with a six month warranty. And what's more, if you're not happy with it when you get it and it's not as you've seen on the, the site, then you, you can give it back with a 14 day guarantee. So go and check out MPB if you're looking to buy or sell some used equipment. And thanks MPB for sponsoring this week's video. Right, that's it. I will eagerly wait for my Z8. There's going to be some good content around that. I'm going to Greenland soon as well, which is pretty exciting. And um, yeah, my Spirit of Luskentire book is almost there. I've got the cover now um, of the book. It's being bound at the moment. It's all been printed. So if you'd ordered one, if you've got a pre-order, then it should go out mid to end of June. Um, and people should start receiving them towards the end of June. If you haven't got a pre-order, there's a few left. Um, I already only ordered a certain amount. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.